Well, here we go. This is episode two of the American Party Podcast. Yeah, it's episode two out of uh, out of four. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not true. We're, we'll probably do a bunch. Yeah, we're going to no, know. It doesn't gonna seem like uh, the weird political nonsense is going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think like when the weird political nonsense goes away, I think that we're going to have, I think, I think this show, what's cool about it is, is we can talk about, I want to talk about the topics that the, the, the majority of Americans are talking about. Right. Right. So like when it's not this, you know, political season is going to be over. You're going to have another wave, probably January, February, Mm -hmm. you know, when, uh, when the president comes in, they're going to, you know, talk shit about the president that's going to kind of get muted. It's going to become static. And then it's like, what's next? Like Mm -hmm. what's next media? Like what comes after, what is the bullshit that you're going to try to push on us? Probably middle of first quarter through you know, the rest of the next year. Well, it'll be, uh, you know, there's always the president's first hundred days. So even if it's Biden, if, if there's a new president, they'll, yeah. the right will be critiquing the first hundred days and what he or she accomplished, or in this case, I guess he, but um, there's always going to be some new controversy because that's what sells. And, and media, particularly the news media, is not really about informing anymore. It's not even infotainment anymore. It's only entertainment at this point well i mean you gotta look here's your news cycle right so the president gets brought in Mm. so after the election obviously it's going to be a shit show figuring out who wins right right? and then the president's going to come in and then you know obviously he's bringing in his cabinet Mm. so you know even president trump will change out his cabinet because i mean he changes out his personnel all the time right so you're going to hear all the shit talking about that right and then you get then you got the first hundred days so we're going to have a you know a week or two about talking shit about that and so that puts us that puts us you know we're talking april time frame um and then then it's like what's next right what's next it makes you wonder what is next i mean uh there's always i think in the beginning of all this uh rampant politicization of the news people had to go out when i say people i mean journalists which are not journalists in any way that we would recognize a journalist anymore but I think they opinionist. felt opinionist. Yeah, opinionist it's yeah. exactly what they are. But I feel like people felt the need to uh, go out and look for stories. And at this point, you just wait. There, it's 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 crowdsourced at this point. Yeah. You let the internet basically tell you the the outrage Olympics on the internet tell you what to care about next. And that's because it's how like it goes. it's like what it's like it's like you've got like two levels. So you got the the freelancers, and they're kind of like the chum for like the, you know, the Washington Post and New York Times, like they're kind of like the chum for those. And then like, they just throw out like, I mean, I'm like, how much, how many stories you think like most of these websites put out a day? I mean, it's like crazy pieces, right? Hundreds and hundreds a day. Yeah. And then it's like one sticks Mm -hmm. and then everybody else runs, runs with it. Right. Everybody else runs with it. And it's kind of like, it's, it's like the, instead of going out and, and telling the facts and, and, journalism journalism was like investigating you know invest like I mean, right. that's kind of what it was right yeah and instead of it being that now it has become nothing but tabloid bullshit all the way up to the top right for sure yeah <clears throat> yeah and it's it's uh you know again I, I i don't know if i said on this show but i've said it on drinker bros a number of time i think it's walter cronkite that's to blame for all this i know he is a uh, historically been a respected newsman but the the fact that he took a political position on vietnam which he, by the way, he was right. Technically speaking, he was correct about Vietnam. We never should have been there. We should have left as soon as possible. And it is an ethical dilemma to be someone who reports the news and not to opine on the news. Yeah. Uh, particularly when lives are being lost and all this stuff is going on. But you have to recognize who you are as a person. Yeah. Like if you're, let, let's say, this is a rudimentary example, and it's kind of one that maybe a lot of people can't identify, but if you're an infantry guy, you're standing on the line, and somebody's outside of your sector of fire, I know you want to shoot them. But you want really, to turn that way, but if you do, you jeopardize everything else by yeah. doing it. And that's exactly what Cronkite did. Just, he, he was a good man, I believe that, very well respected, and he told the truth. But he set the way, he, he, he set the standard for people to start, in journalism, to start delving into politics. And now it's full ham. There's, there, there's not one journalist out there that I truly believe or respect at this point. Not one. Yeah, I mean, that I, I honestly <clears throat> believe when they when they tell me something, that there's not some kind of bend or slant to that information. I, I agree, and yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Like, I, that's a that, there's really 
you can go down that rabbit hole a long ways. Man, it's pretty crazy. You know, it's last week. You know, mm. we watch. I think I called this probably four weeks ago, a month ago, um, that that there was going to be one more big, big wave, mm. big crisis coming before election. And I don't know that it could get any bigger than our own president of the United States, 70 some years old, 74, yeah. 74 years old, out of shape. I mean, you don't find a, a, a human being who is more at risk of dying for this, really, who's, more, who's a better candidate to die from COVID right. than this and walks out of the hospital in three days. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good for the left, by the way. It's like, not. I'm, I'm not saying that the left at large wanted him to die, but it does, it's not good for there to be a concrete, very, very public and the most public an example can be as the president of the United yeah. States. It's not a good, uh, good for them that a very public example of the fact, and it is a fact, that the survivability rate, even for the most at-risk group, which is he's in, is 94.6%, right? Yeah. It's not good for their messaging. It's not good for the shutdown culture and all this other nonsense that they've been trying to pull. It's not good for them to do it. So what do they do? They immediately turn towards, uh, this is not a pro-Trump show, by the way. We'll get into what yeah. this show is here in a yeah, few minutes yeah, again. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to continue to do that over the first 10 or so episodes. Yeah, this just is to not remind a pro-Trump people, show. I don't give two fucks about any of that. Yeah. But coming after him for that in particular, like shifting the narrative to, it's not a guy who's trying to do the job. Look, if you're the leader of the free world, you have to show people that you're not fucking coughing your lungs out and bleeding to death in a hospital. You yeah. have to be out on the street doing stuff. I understand there are some things you can probably avoid and not put other people at risk. But the truth of the matter is he's trying to lead the country. And there's an inherent risk. He, nobody, he, didn't, he didn't risk anybody more than he risked himself. I you mean, have to understand that. Like We as leaders in the infantry back in the day knew that I'm going through the door first, mm -hmm. always, because I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything I won't do. And Trump... Whether you hate him or like him or think he was irresponsible in all this, he didn't expose anybody to anything that he didn't expose himself to. Yeah. And he is in the, literally in the most at-risk category. So what do you expect of a president? Aren't, aren't they supposed to be out there letting people know they're still around, projecting strength and power and confidence, right? Yeah. Not just for people to go about their daily lives, but also for the fucking market, the well, thing that keeps us all afloat. Yeah. Like those things are important. Now, there are a lot of criticisms to be had. I mean, but so, so like, you know, so I, I put that, I'll tell you what, man, like, I don't have a lot of empathy for the man. Like, look, he, he, mm. uh, he's a shit show. Like, look, I got, he's like, he is, he's a, look, honestly, he's a typical New Yorker. I mean, he runs his mouth yeah. off, right? He's a typical chip on his shoulder New Yorker that just has, you know, like he, he is a guy, I mean, he's a Wall Street, like he is what you would call your typical Wall Street, big money guy, New Yorker, old New Yorker, right? Right. Um, Love it or hate it, right? But my thing is, is when I see people, especially leaders, mm. calling out, wishing death on Trump. Right. Like, how do you, like, I'll tell you, I, the only time I've ever, and I guess it was a, a real thing for me to humanize this man, but when he was getting ready, when he was walking off that, when they showed that video of him walking off Marine One, mm. going to get in and going to Walter Reed. I'll be honest, like it broke my heart a little bit. It was like, man, like this is a man who's walking in there who's probably scared to death if he's going to die. Probably, yeah. But at the same time, it being scared to death, and that's, this is something you and I can relate to yeah. because anybody that tells you they're not scared in combat is a liar, frankly. That's the first so, way. Going into that position, you know that I, I am 25 to, 20, to 30 years old at this point, maybe 23 if you're, if you're advanced quickly. I'm somewhere in my mid to late 20s, maybe in my early 30s, and I have to walk into this situation where I have to assume that I'm going to die. Otherwise, I can't. Like, if you're paralyzed by this stuff, if you're thinking about it, you, can't, you just have to assume you're going to die. And we've seen and guys still, who didn't. Yeah, and they get fucking smoked yep. because they hesitate. So I have to pretend like none of this is happening and go on about my life because these 18 and 19 and 20-year-olds don't know what the fuck I know, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to be able to follow me into this shit. And if I show any kind of weakness whatsoever, they're going to perceive it as some, a reason to hesitate. And yeah. that's going to get them killed. So it's not just about being a tough guy or any of this bullshit. It's about making sure that you're projecting strength because strength is something people will follow. Yes. And you cannot afford to hesitate in those situations in the market or in daily life or any of this stuff, particularly not in combat. And it's, you, you can, there's a, so many reasons to criticize Donald Trump. So he, many reasons. He gives you plenty on a daily basis. I don't think this is one of them, honestly. And no. I think when you, when you come out of the gate as the left or whomever you are and you criticize him for things 
that are reasonable and logical, then you undercut all the good reasons to, to but criticize don't, them. But don't you think that that's the point like of what the epitome of what's wrong with America is when another human being wishes death on another. Like I get we can fight and but you know against each other because mm. like we're like a dysfunctional family. Right. But why would you wish death on the leader of the free world? Because like him dying doesn't put Democrats or Republicans in a better position, no matter how you look no, at it. No, no. Like the market dying, would collapse. The mar- it would we're, collapse. All your 401ks out there would go away. Absolutely. Uh, you would lose like incremental. And, 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 2008 and, would be, a, the, the, the balloon yeah, in 2008 yeah, would yeah. be a joke compared to what this would yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, it would crash so hard. So, you know, I got there, these people right, and I did this video on my Instagram, and I got all these people right, and they're like, we know Donald Trump has downplayed this, you know, so long, like while well, millions of, or hundreds of thousands of people have died. So my question to you is this, is if he hadn't downplayed it and he had upplayed it, right. our market would be through the floor. Right. Like we would be paralyzed as a nation. Mm-hmm. Like, like we would be in a much worse position. I don't know. I don't know that Donald Trump believed a lot of the stuff he said, but I think that he had to come out and act that way. I mean, how many times have you had a leader that knew that we were probably going to get our ass killed? Yeah. But had to fake it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, look at all these quotes from these generals, like, like, oh, we're surrounded. Well, that's good. It just simplifies the problem. Right. I mean, look, that's the 82nd Airborne's motto. People it, are like, hey, you're surrounded. Like, we're the Airborne, brother. We're supposed to be surrounded. Yeah. That's the whole point of this whole shit. And the infantry motto, by the way, isn't uh, it's going to be okay. It's follow me. Right. So when Trump says, when he tweeted the other day, for example, uh, don't let this fear run your life. And I'm paraphrasing because it's not exactly yeah. what he said, but he said, don't fucking fear this stuff. It's. And the data supports that, by the way. For me yes. and you, by the way, the survivability rate, even in our 30s now, is 99.97%. I'll take that chance. All day. Frankly, I'll, I'll take it. And uh, for, even for him, in the worst possible category, it's still pretty goddamn good. So follow me means something to me. It's, drilled, it's been drilled in my head over and over, but I feel like, this, I feel like our country has lost that, right? There's something about... Uh, there, there's, there's no... There's no authority to appeal to anymore. Nobody knows what's true or what's not. And that's a problem for the media. It's not about politicians necessarily. Politicians are going to do stupid shit. They're going to lie to you to get their way. They're going to do all this stuff. I don't trust politicians at all. I trust them to be politicians though, right? And I trust leaders to be leaders in the situation where that kind of leadership is required. So when somebody is in a very dire situation, and this is a dire situation insofar as there is a big part of the population that is at risk for this, for sure. And we need to take care of those people. I expect that leader to project power, right? Because yeah. we cannot win if we're weak. No, and, and what situation ever have you faced any kind of trial or hurdle or anything and given half an effort or a weak effort and been able to overcome that? Never. You will never do it, <clears throat> right? Violence of action is something that we talk about in the military a lot. And it's not just a, a, a violently executed, I think... Uh, God, was it Patton that said this? A violently executed plan is better than a plan. Or a violently executed plan now is better than a good plan two weeks from now or something 100%. like that. Like, yes, do, do what the fuck you got to do, man. So, life, life doesn't stop to wait on you to come up with a fucking plan. You just got to move no, it's, out sometimes. it's fucking life, right? And I think, like, like beat him down, whatever. I mean, like, like, I think he did what was best for the country, presented himself what's best for the country. Because right. the other thing that I think people don't understand is, is you've got North Korea, China, yeah. You've got Russia They're just sitting waiting back, for some sign of weakness. That's all. Waiting for a little bit of yeah. a fucking opportunity, right? Yep. And like as soon as you show weakness, we're fucked. Right. And 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 I don't think Americans understand that or respect it or appreciate it. And I think it's kind of I just I just think it's messed up and I think that like like there's no way that the man sits up in the office and does what he does for free and feels and doesn't care about Americans dying. No, of course, no of course there's, he does. Of course he does. There's no way. And it's, I, I think it, I think it kind of, uh, if you remember, what was it, the second of the Batman movies where the, the guy playing Harvey Dent, they're talking about you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. I feel like there's no way to be a great president or great leader in a challenging time like this without a lot of people disliking what you do. I think it's part okay. of it. So, I mean, I just looked this up, right? So your chances of dying in a car crash are one in 103. Mm-hmm. Uh, your chances of dying from heart disease mm. is one in six. One in six, that's 16%. So we see plenty of cops stopping people for speeding. How many times do we see people educating on not 
putting butter and sugar into your mouth all day for the next 40 years, right? And cancer is one in seven. Right. So, but data doesn't matter. It's all about perception, right? I mean, it's about what can grab attention. The president of the United States getting COVID is going to grab attention. And I mean, and here's the thing, like, so now you look at it, like my, my opinion, what does this change? Like, what, like if you're an American, mm. you're an American sitting back and you watch this 74 year old guy mm. get COVID and now you can't deny he got COVID. Right. There's too many doctors involved who would out right, him yeah. if he didn't. There's, no. <clears throat> so you can't deny he got COVID and he's, he never stopped working. Right. And, and then. Yeah. He never stopped working mm -hmm. and now he's back getting after it. Like how how do you sit back and live your life scared down? I don't know and by the way, uh if it were Biden in office right now or if it was still if this happened under the Obama administration, Biden would be laying in bed. Biden might be, but I don't think Obama would be. I think Obama would still be working, frankly. I agree. I, I think I, Obama would handle it the same way. I, I think he would like how do you not? How do you how do you fucking just because what kind of leader are you if just because you're threatened, you don't do your fucking job where 320 to 350 million people, depending on your estimate, are counting on you day to day yeah. for everything, for, to keep you safe from other countries, to, to make sure the market is stable and all this other stuff. Like you don't have the option at that point to do this stuff. So the criticism he's received for, for being out there and active and in public and back in the Oval Office now, even yeah. COVID positive, look, Nobody is more at risk in that room than him. Than him. Yeah. Those Secret Service agents that are from mid 30s to mid 40s that are some of the most in shape people on earth, by the way, are not at risk at all. Let me throw this. this. Let me let me throw this to you. Ready? I know for a fact that I have been exposed to at least five mm. COVID positive patients, right? And treated them mm. and gave care to them. I don't have. I'm fine. Right. And you would be fine even if you... Even if I got it, right? Even if you got it, yeah. So I mean, like, look, so but, but, this, but, is not, this is not to say that COVID is a hoax or any of that not. bullshit. It's, here's, the, here's the point. If you're, in this, if you're in our age group, if you're in your 30s and you're yeah. relatively healthy, you have a 99.97 survivability rate. That's just data, man. It's from the CDC website. This isn't fucking some crazy conspiracy theory. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's weird how just saying true things have become some kind of... Like Facebook will censor you now. And what's up with Fauci? I, that guy Fauci, yeah, he's a he's a Fauci, knucklehead. He whatever. he's been all over the place. He's all over. But minute. I think I think he's I think I, I feel bad for the guy because I feel like he is representative of somebody who doesn't want to play politics but has been forced into it. Because science says, as I get new data, I change my mind. You yeah. should, by the way. And it's hard to do it in politics, isn't it? You, because they're like, <laughs> oh, you're flip flopping. No, I got new information. Fuck face. Yeah. Like they thought that masks weren't necessary for a while and uh you know for for us look getting COVID's not that big a deal for you and me right no. but for older people if you're going to be exposed to older people Absolutely. or you're going to be around older people be be a good steward be a good person think about other people before yourself if you need to if you need to go out to one of these public places where there's a lot of old people wear a mask because if they get it like if you get it it's not a big deal but if they get it they're going to die but let me probably. ask you this like who like if you haven't had COVID, if you're listening to the show and you haven't right. had COVID. How do you even say that you're more of an expert on COVID than President Trump, who just had it? I don't know, man. I, I don't know where um, it, it's there, there's no logic to any of this stuff. I mean, it's like people who have these. Uh, there, there's an article on CNN today about is Trump really a master negotiator? Like, well, I don't know. He just has signed three peace deals between Arab nations and Israel in the last month. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I mean, it's the first time in 50 years that's happened. A lot yeah. of presidents have ha been uh, on the job for the last 50 years, and the guy that everybody thinks is a fucking xenophobe that hates Muslims and all this stuff, all this other, like he's a total racist piece of shit, all this stuff. Somehow this guy with this reputation <laughs> is the guy that got it all done. Maybe your perception of somebody, maybe the fact that the guy seems coarse and he doesn't care about pleasantries and all this other nonsense, maybe that's what that job needs, right? Maybe in a wartime, which we're in a war, right? We're in, a, we're in an ideological war globally right now about what is it, what is it truly to be ethical? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think we're in, a, we're, we're in that stage in human history and human civilization where we have all the basic needs met, 
And now we're going to turn inwards and kind of figure out what it means to be a human being. And here's what it doesn't mean to be a human being. It doesn't mean to allow Arab countries to tell women they can't drive unless they're, or they're going to get stoned to death. It doesn't mean you can throw people off the top of rooftops. That is not racist towards Muslim or uh, 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 Arab people or whatever the fuck. And it's not anti-Islam or any of that shit. That is a fact. It is, ir- it is immoral to kill somebody or threaten somebody or whatever the fuck else because of what they believe yeah. or what they do in their personal life. That is immoral, and there's no fucking question about that. So anybody that acts that way, we have to hold them accountable, right? Yes. That's just the way it is. That is not a racist thing to say. And I think the people that people don't understand is, is like, like I, I think the issue with accountability, I, I think, look, no doubt people know right and wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think the issue is when you talk accountability and you start holding people accountable, there is no accountability without conflict. There's none. No, it ha- there has to be conflict at some point, right? Because that's how we settle things. Now, Jordan Peterson says this all the time. He says, if we're not able to fight with our words, we're going to have to fight with our fists. So this whole PC culture nonsense where I can't say this because it might offend you, you need to be offended. Yeah. Because we need to express these ideas and collectively as a group decide if they're okay or not. Well, people are just like, they've gotten so, it's gotten so easy to be comfortable that they don't want to mm. be uncomfortable. No, and people are so used to being lied to as well. Like, I, I don't know... Uh, which was the chicken and which was the egg and this whole PC nonsense. But uh, wh- whatever it was, we got started down this path where it, it, become, it became uncomfortable for people to hear the truth and then it became pe- uncomfortable for people to say the truth. Yeah. And when that becomes the case, I mean, where do you go from there? There's no, there's no outlet for anything anymore. There's no reasonable standard for or reasonable expectation to hear the truth on a day-to-day basis. Now, all of a sudden, if one plus one equals two came into question, what the fuck would we do with math at that point? Money, travel, any, any of the things like engineering, physics, all this I mean, stuff, but haven't we what already, would happen? Haven't, it would all break down immediately, ha- right? I mean, but aren't we close? With numbers, I think we're probably fine. Uh, yeah, but, but we'll I mean, see. I mean, who I mean, knows? I mean, like if, if you have a penis, you're not a male anymore. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I, there was a meme I posted a while back. Like, what is something you could say in 2020 that you couldn't have said? in 1990 and it's like hey that dude uh, or that chick has a really nice penis yeah you know what i mean yeah i mean it's it's a weird thing to say and maybe that's i just i just want to know where the line's at like i want to know where does this like where does the where where where, what like like where does the like who decides the truth well i mean that's a problem right it used to be people like uh like walter cronkite but he decided to get involved in politics like you have to, it's not about you, motherfucker. And it's not always just about what is quote unquote right, technically speaking. Like sometimes, here, so this is a good uh, story. I think I may have told this on Drinking Bros before, but when Alan Turing and his team uh, broke the Enigma code, so this is where computers came from, right? They realized the, the Enigma code changed so rapidly that human beings weren't able to, to figure it out in one day because it changed every single day. So he built a machine that would figure it out Pretty, pretty quickly, right? It tried all the possibilities and had a solution really fast so then they knew what the fuck was going on. That's where computers, your phone, that's where it came from. All from this gay man that was chemically castrated, by the way, by the English government. So That's crazy. Do, do what you want to with that information. But it wasn't just that. They didn't just break the Enigma code. They also had to decide which of these plans that the Nazis had were they actually going to interdict. So they had to decide on a daily basis to let English people, their own countrymen, die. So they didn't expose the fact that they had broken the code so they could make bigger uh, interdictions and end the war sooner. Now, they, the projections are that they saved somewhere between 15 to 60 million lives by breaking the code and then by choosing where to interdict and not just blowing their load right there at the beginning. That is, a, that is an ethical dilemma for anybody yeah. to decide to let people die because you know there's a bigger mission at hand. That is a problem for people. But... It's a problem that Walter Cronkite failed at, whereas Turing and his team did a good job because they ended that war much more qu- quickly than it would have otherwise ended, and Cronkite failed. And now we have no, there's no truth to appeal to anymore. No. Like if you saw something on the, a- even 10 years ago, like the a- I see the AP wire now, and there's opinion pieces on it. The AP, the Associated Press, it's only supposed to be information. There's not supposed to be any analysis or opinion on there at all. It's all supposed to be information, but now it's littered with this shit. There's nowhere to go for information anymore. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's uh, like, where do you go get your news at, right? Like, 
like where do you where like where like where do you get your information at me personally i just look around and then kind of use you know uh human intelligence to figure out what the fuck's going on i assume about people the worst typically and you ask the question qui bono who benefits from this like if there's some kind of situation going on yeah and you think there might be some kind of hand behind it moving things around well who might want that to happen yeah and that's where like if you're a police officer and you're you're a detective particularly that's usually where you'll start your investigation if you work in the intelligence community same kind of deal right but i have to look everywhere now and figure it out for myself the problem is i do this professionally so i can do it but people in the like if you've got a nine to five job where you work at 50 60 hours a they week only get sound there's bites no chance you're going to do that all you're seeing is sound bites and you're seeing fucking facebook memes so let me ask you this let me ask you this what do you, what is america if joe biden wins um i mean he's so ineffectual that nothing will really happen i think but i know what they want they want not not him particularly but the people that are propping him up and believe me they're propping him up because he's he can't stand on his own uh it, it's it's they don't know it yet but it's socialism i i genuinely feel like these people don't understand what it is they're doing because they don't never, no one they don't never ride here like i don't care who's the president no well it's the same thing like everybody's like oh austin's a super liberal city it's as all liberal these, as texas lets it be right all these antifa dum-dums tried to set up a fucking autonomous zone like chop Chaz, whatever the fuck you want to call it here 45 minutes later state police rode them out of the street on horseback yeah so it's like it's still texas bro just relax and i agree with you to some extent america will rebuke that there's there's uh by the way Something like 15% of all gun owners in the country right now, as after this last year, are new gun owners. 15%. That's, That's a crazy. big statistic, yeah. So it's, it, it shows you that people are starting to take their own liberty a little more seriously. All these things tend to balance each other out, but you have to have the appropriate amount of inf uh, information going on. I don't think Biden can make that big of a dent, frankly. No. Um, but I know that the people that support him and the people that are behind him don't see the forest for the trees. Don't, they don't see the fact that when you, when 400 plus thousand businesses shut down and 60% of those will never reopen, yeah. that the dependence, the, the, the lack of accessibility to entrepreneurship after that and the dependence on the government only goes one direction. It goes towards socialism, right? It has to. The universal basic income and all this stuff, creative destruction, all these economic principles over the years always lead to either innovation or socialism. And socialism is untenable. We're not going to allow that. I will fight a fucking war in any yeah. country, but so, especially my own, to stop that shit from happening. So I think, I think, so, so I don't think Obama's been effective. I don't think Trump's been effective. Mm. I don't think any of them have been effective on getting any change. And I think that's the part where a country's stagnant. Like, if anything, they've gotten the title and they've gotten the platform and the mic and they've put all these fucking promises out there. And what right. this really comes down to is, is that all these people have been promising shit for the last 12 years yeah. now, you know, getting ready to go on, you know, 16. And, like, people are getting fed up with nothing getting better. Well, and I, I mean, think that's where, like, the country's, you know, you're getting these uproar and you're getting all this. Yeah. Everybody's on a bursting because, because like, I mean, I, I would like to see, I don't know what the statistics are, but how many policies, how many bills did Obama get through? Well, I mean, that's a good question to ask. And you, the, the solution to that would uh, be what you would have to discuss 2010 when all the Tea Party people came in and became one of the most obstructionist houses of all time. It was called the Do Nothing Congress, right? Like they came in and immediately tried to stop anything Obama was doing. Now, I'm not saying that Obama's policies were great. I think his biggest accomplishment, the Affordable Care Act, is a total piece of shit, Bill. It's a total handout to insurance companies, and it neglected to take care of women in the right way. They capitulated on pretty much everything as soon as religious organizations got involved and told women they couldn't have access to certain kind of preventative care because these religious organizations told them they couldn't, which is fucked, by the way. So yeah. all this stuff. But look, man, you, you have to take that into consideration. But I don't, I don't think... Uh, I think we overestimate the power of the presidency. And I think, we've, I think we need to rethink what it should mean. Like the president, I don't think the president's job should be to have policies. I think the president's job should be to listen to Congress and the, and the Senate and hear what the people think about policies and then make that happen, right? Why would the president, like as a leader, well, you want to- Because I think, I, think I, I, just, so I disagree. I think, mm -hmm. I think he has to be on top of it because he is a huge branch. On top of it, for sure. I think, he, I think he's got to be a big role right. in it because he's, I mean, he's, 
I mean, he's one of the big branches of, mm-hmm. uh, of, executive of the checks branch, and balance. Yeah. I mean, he's the executive yeah. branch. Mm-hmm. And I, I, so, and I think it, at a minimum, yeah, he might not have to be, you know, all the way into it. But here's what I think he does have to be, is he has to be a hell of a negotiator between the Republicans and Democrats to get bills passed. Exactly right? like, what I'm, where I was going with right? that. So like, well, it's maybe not, I just beat you to it. Sorry. Yeah, you, no, no it's, that, it's, a good, it's good to ferret it out, though, and have that discussion because the president's job shouldn't be like, I believe in these 12 things, and this is what we're going to do for the rest of this term because yeah. if, if Congress doesn't agree, we're seeing it right now. So this whole debate over a stimulus, a stimulus package, the left wants this massive package that has all this pork in it handouts to everybody, what the fuck ever, right? And it's always like that. It's called a rider in Congress. When you're trying to make a bill and somebody, like both sides do this, they'll attach, if they don't want a bill to pass, they'll attach a bunch of bullshit riders to it that they know the other side won't vote for. Then they'll blame the other side for not voting for it. You know, it's, it's absolute fucking nonsense, but it happens all the time. And it's we're seeing it with the stimulus thing. So Trump actually tried to suspend it. He said, you know what? Fuck all this other stuff. Let's just give $1,200, like we were talking about, to everybody that needs it right now. Fuck all the other parts of this bill. Let's pass this part of it right now. And they, everybody just went home. Can I ask, let me ask you this though. Does $1,200 fix this? Does 12, like, like, do you think $1,200, no. the, 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 the money that's going to be spent to this? Right. Do you really think, two, just a two-part question, mm. do you really think, A, $1,200 is really going to make a huge difference in people's lives? And then B, I think, do I think it could? I think it could, but I don't think it's life-changing. Right. And then I think, B, can we trust Americans to use it how they need to use it? Well, typically speaking, Americans don't. So uh, here's what I think. Okay. Instead of putting twelve hundred dollars out and giving it to every American, you put it in a form to where they can use it towards what they need. Right. I don't think you can trust like I don't think you can trust Americans to go and spend this where they need to spend it. Uh, maybe not, but you can't you can't make that decision for them because then you're starting to uh, infringe on people's individual liberty. No, I get it. You have to change up your game plan, though. So here's an example of this. Right now, the global market is making a huge comeback. It's not just the U.S. So the U.S. market, our Dow went down to like, I think, 21 some K. After it was at 29.5. It's all the way back up to 28.7, I think. I don't know. They said it dropped like today. They said right, it dropped a little bit today, yeah. But it, like it's, it's come all the way back, right? Essentially, maybe a thousand shy of its peak in history. And uh, the global market's also doing well. And the reason the global market is doing well is because American consumers are buying shit right now. That's what America does. We buy shit. You know what I mean? We innovate. We make the internet. We make new technologies. We, make, we have Tesla. We have all the social media companies exist here. All that stuff happens here. And then America uses that money that we make off that to buy shit from other countries. Yeah. And the more we buy from other countries, the less likely they are to fuck with us. Right? It's just the way it is. Yeah. It's, the way the, it's the way the global market works these days. I think that you have to put more money in the hands of the American people, but I don't think it's the government's job to do that. The government's job is to get the fuck out of the way. Make sure nobody's being taken advantage of for sure. But the fact that we're shutting down all these private businesses, and you're seeing it in the federal courts now, the, the Michigan Supreme Court told Governor Whitmer to get fucked with all her rules. Yeah. And the, in Pennsylvania, there was a federal court ruling a couple of weeks ago that all these shutdowns, including bars and stuff like this, are completely unconstitutional. You never had any authority to do that. So- they, use this, they use their power... Like the threat of, of violence, and that's what it is, sending people to your home to arrest you and put you in jail. It's a threat of violence to convince you that you are subservient to the government. That is the opposite way that we've, from what we built this country to be. You, as a government, like all these government employees and all these politicians, they work for fucking me, okay? You don't work for uh, some, some abstract entity that we call America. No, you work for me because I'm an American. You work yeah. for every other fucking American. And the fact that you would even presume to think that you could come into my house and tell me what to fucking do and shut down my goddamn business because of this fucking disease or virus rather that has a 99.97 cumulative fucking uh, survivability rate, you can get fucked with that bullshit, Yeah. right? And what they've done is they've stripped away people's individual power to make money for themselves. And now they want us to rely on the government to do that. Now, what other organization does that? That is pure, unadulterated socialism. And we are not going to let that happen here. No. Period. And the courts are finally starting to catch up. Finally. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I think you know, I think the next ninety days is going to tell us a lot. Like, because I, I wonder how long this COVID thing is going to hold on. It depends on who gets elected, frankly. Okay. okay. I mean, it, like if if Biden gets elected, I I guarantee God DMT you if Biden gets We're elected, wearing a mask for the how left long? for for maybe forever. Who knows? But the businesses won't be shut down anymore because he can't afford. The left can't afford for his first hundred days to be an economic disaster, and it will be. Just because anytime yeah. a new Democrat comes into office, usually the economy goes down for a little bit for whatever reason. You can, you can name a bunch of different reasons. But if, if you continue to reimpose, and California and New York are talking about it now, reimpose all these restrictions on businesses, like w- happened over the summer and killed all these fucking private businesses, if you do that again in the first 100 days of Biden, his first 100 days will be an, abstra- or, uh, uh, an abject disaster economically, and they can't afford that. So I promise you, if he were to get elected, all this stuff will open back up. And it's not even, it's not because it should. It's because this political party needs it to. Do you understand how yeah, fucked up oh, that yeah, is? That's fucked up. That's so right. fucked up. <clears throat> so Trump, Trump gets reelected. Right. The left is going to fight him as hard as they can. I think we're done sure. with masks by January though. Maybe. Yeah. And here's the, the good thing about that is that there won't be any way for them to stop him from uh, nominating or uh, I'm sorry, getting the new Supreme Court justice in there, and they'll fast track anything through the courts they can to get it to that SCOTUS yeah. for sure. And I think, personally, I think he made a mistake. I think he should have nominated Barbara Lagoa. Maybe there's some reason he didn't. I don't know why, but I think nominating her would have pretty much sealed Florida for him. I don't, there had to be some compelling reason for them not to do that. Man, I'll be honest. Is. I think if he was gonna, if he was gonna put anybody in there in the Supreme Court, I think he put a, he should have put Judge Judy in. Judy Scheinlin? Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's I mean, tough. I think Judge Judy, I think he should have, I think he should have brought Judge Judy in and or said, Judge hey, Joe hey, Brown, hey maybe. Like, she's, you know what I mean? What about that judge? I think he's from Connecticut. <laughs> it's this old man. And he's like, all this, the YouTube videos are of him, <laughs> like being super nice to people yeah. and stuff. Maybe him. Maybe him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's where I'm at. I, you know, I, I, so I think like when, when we run for president, Mm. So and I, I'll go ahead and tell you who I think is going to be up against us. Mm. I think Nikki Haley's going to run twenty twenty four. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think Nikki Haley's. I think that's why you see her being quiet right now. She's yeah. not getting in the mix of any of this shit. She's laying low. Smart woman. We will smoke check her though. I mean, like, dude, we'll blow the doors off her. Um, but I think the one thing we have to do when we get in office is that the bills. Each bill, like each thing you want passed mm-hmm. is one bill. Right. Like we have to fix this. Yeah, this whole rider nonsense. Yeah, yeah. this rider nonsense, it's gotta right? Go. We're gonna, we're, it's going to be individual. So we're going to vote on individual bills. Right. And so we're going we're gonna to cut that bullshit out, yep. right? Um, I think that's going to be pretty, I think that's going to, I think that's going to solve a lot of our problems. Yeah, I think it would too. Ghostbed's yeah. the best company in the world. Honestly, they like, so if you're a, first responder of any kind so fire ems police or a nurse yeah uh 30 percent off for life forever and i'll Uh, tell you this right now you mark our words mm. you mark mine and d'anthony's words (laughs) if we get elected president and vice Mm. president of of the united states the united states every bed in that White House. Oh, we'll switch them out for ghost beds. We'll be sure. fucking ghost beds. And there'll be adjustable bases too. Adjustable yeah, bases? For sure. Yeah. So 30% off if you're in any of those categories. If you're a military person or a veteran, mm-hmm. right? Cop, any yep. of that stuff. They take care of, like, their, their ethos. We just talked to their marketing director yesterday. Their ethos is to take care of the people who are taking care of us. Yeah. Um, They're so badass. Easy to work it's with. It's the best. And even if you're not one of those categories, you go onto our site right now, there's a bundle package. Go to uh, ghostbeds.com ghostbeds. forward, slash, com forward yeah. slash drinking It's 25% bros. off right now in the bundle package. They're also going to be coming out with more deals for the uh, lower level stuff like the sheets and pillows just for like people who want to get their feet wet. I know yeah. it's a bed's a big ticket purchase. Big ticket. So sometimes you want to make sure that there's quality there. I can tell you there is or you can experience it yourself for a much lower price. But you can do it like you get it for 101 days, send it back. Yeah. Um, it's 101 day guarantee. There's a 25 year uh, warranty on the goddamn mattress itself. Yeah, cooling then, technology. Yeah, cooling technology with the Lux, the L U X E, the Ghost Bed Lux, yeah. and also they have a pay as you go plan, thirty six months no interest. You can spend. I think it. Uh, we looked at it one time for a king size mattress, Ghost Lux. I think it came out to like thirty two dollars a month. Thirty two dollars a month, like and it's like zero percent down. Yeah, dude. Hundred like, one. You can sleep in it a hundred and one nights go, and then send it back. Go find a bank that'll give you 
basically a twelve hundred dollar loan with no interest over three years. Well, let me ask you, you this: I mean? like a hundred and one nights, exist. what would you do in a in a ghost bed? A hundred, like how many, like a hundred? You're going to need to talk to that one over there about uh, that. Whatever uh, she allows me to do. Is wow. Well. well, anyways, go check it out: <laughs> ghostbeds.com forward slash drinking bros. What's well, ghost bed? Not ghosts bed. You slurring, <laughs> stuttering. Gosh, how does Ross do it? Like say all the words right? Yeah. Just no. I'm saying like <laughs> rasp his voice. Oh, I don't know. He's um, I think he sits at home and looks in the mirror and does it with yeah. a with a fake microphone up to yeah. his face. And no, I get it. Stuff, yeah. I get it, man. So we were talking um, about Judge Judy and uh, yeah, no. Judge Judy, like uh, you know, first Supreme Court justice. Now, before we move back into uh, the rest of the show, I want to talk about what this show is. We say we we've talked about it a couple times on your old show, then on Drinking Bros about the American party, what that means. It's not, and we talked about it last week on the fake news. Actually, I think it was about 31 minutes in, if you want to go check that out. But the American party is not about being a political party. It's not about, it's not about isolating yourself or becoming part of a smaller tribe. It's, it's actually about becoming part of a bigger tribe, the tribe of America. What, what is best for this country? What makes us all best? There are, there are real answers to these questions. Yeah. There's an answer to the question. What's the best, uh, economic, uh, uh, situation for america and it's capitalism we figured that out because socialism fails everywhere right yeah. so we know it's capitalism now look there are a lot of greedy people in capitalist situations anytime there's any kind of opportunity for bad people to do bad shit bad people will do bad shit so we have to have ways to take care of that right but we everybody to, can win like this ain't a mob no this is not a zero-sum game this it's is not, not a, you versus me no it's every, us versus the things that keep all of us from being happy right yeah like everybody can win yes like the way that this country was established and founded and set up, it was so that everybody could win. And if we right. can get back to that, everybody can be a fucking winner. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, th that should be the way you look at political issues. If you're looking at, if you're, if you're a person, particularly a privileged person, and I consider myself to be pretty fucking privileged, even though my childhood wasn't great, I've managed to make my way to it. It doesn't matter how you got there. At this point in your life, you're privileged now. Yeah. And you have, a, you have a fiduciary responsibility to take care of people who are not privileged at that point. Absolutely. That is what society is all about. Martin Luther King Jr. said you have two hands for a reason. One to pull yourself up and the other one to pull the next guy up with you. And that's the only reason we function as a society. It's the, yeah. only, re it's the only reason we've gotten this far. So if your inclination is when you have something great is to keep it to yourself and, and box other people out, then brother, you're a piece of shit. Frankly, You're a piece and I don't want to. I don't want to know you. And, and the American Party is about the rejection of that ideology. It's a rejection of the fact that this is a zero sum me versus you game. This is America. Like our idea, the, America is bigger than you or me. It's yeah. bigger. It's bigger than that flag right there. Yep. It's bigger than these people who lead this country. It's bigger than the soldiers, even the ones that have died for this country. Yes, it's, it's, an, I, it's an idea that is bigger than all of us. No, and I think like I think with the like with what we have here, I mean like. I would be, I'm all about like growing and getting better, right? Like right. what we say today is, is not the absolute end all be all. No. If we get educated and get more information, right? Yeah. Like this is a, like, like imagine, imagine back in the day, like democracy is nothing more than an idea. Mm. It's an idea and, a, and an experiment that, that is just, that, that is the greatest experiment that was probably ever, that's probably ever had. But I can't think that, that you take capitalism and democracy is not the two key things that in, in the constitution, right? right. And <clears throat> is not the three key things that keeps us the freest country on the face of the planet. For sure it is. And look, people have, uh, people are rightfully upset with both political parties right yeah. now. Yeah. And they should be. And uh, to be honest, I don't see a whole lot of hope in, in the third parties that exist right now. No. Uh, Liber like we, we just had on Drigger Bros, we had Spike Cohen on this past week. Um, he's the VP candidate for the Libertarian Party, and he's a smart guy, for sure. But their ideas are still, in my opinion, very rudimentary, very sophomore. It's like, well, this is how I would like it in a perfect world. It's not a fucking perfect world. It's not world, a perfect okay? world, like, but how do you want it in our world? Yeah, well, I mean, it, here's the deal. They, they like to talk about, I hate saying here's the deal. I've said that for years, and Joe Biden says that all the time, and now I feel like Biden. So I don't know where I am right now. Uh, hey, At Biden. any rate, uh, what? Hey Biden. Hey, uh, yeah. So hey, what we were uh, talking about right was, now. Uh, so so uh, it's gonna be great. So what we're telling you is with <laughs> with the American Party, it's gonna be beautiful, and you're gonna love it, and everybody's gonna love it. And so how I'm gonna we're do gonna Biden. It. He's gonna do yeah. Trump. It's the it's a magnificent. It's bigly. Uh, no, it's they don't they they have this phrase all taxation is theft, right? But that is like saying 
all cops are bad, mm -hmm. right? Because you had a bad experience with a cop or you saw somebody do that or you saw it in the news media. That's, that's nonsense to say that. It's childish in my opinion. Yeah. The real solution is out there. The real solution is that we all should individually, for each thing that costs money in government, we should pay that tax at the lowest possible level, city, county, state, country, right? Mm -hmm. At the lowest possible level. That means your vote and no, each November or in the springtime, if it's one of those uh, you know, uh, municipal midterm elections, your vote means the most relative to the dollars you spend in taxes. So every, the lowest possible level that you can spend your money at as a, as a uh, private citizen, as a taxpayer in the country, that means the more authority you have over how that dollar is spent, right? So only, it should be the last case scenario, the last case for you to spend money at the federal level. That's why the 10th Amendment of the Constitution exists. It's why the things not spelled out in this Constitution and Bill of Rights all fall back down to the states. That was the way the framers intended this country to be, and we've abandoned that. Well, think about this. Here you go. If people say that Donald Trump didn't pay any taxes, right, come on. his vote wouldn't even fucking count mm -hmm. under that system, right? Yeah. So, you know, like, I, like I, so I believe that you could start with that if you don't pay property tax, right, and you don't pay any taxes, mm -hmm then you don't get to vote. Well, here's... here's Tell me so what's wrong with that. Now, now we're dealing with uh, these tech companies, and it's not just tech companies, it's, it's conglomerates in general, but um, Facebook, Amazon, over the last couple... Amazon paid taxes for the first time this year in like five years, uh, and it wasn't nearly as much as they should have probably, but I think it was 2015... GE profited 13... Not, not made, profited 13 billion, and they got a refund. Right, I'm all for that's damn good accountants. Yeah, I know, right? I'm all for the idea of job creators. I'm all for incentivizing people to keep jobs in America where our people are benefiting the most from it. Because it's not just about being America first. It's not about being xenophobic. It's not about hating other places. It's about I need to be in the best position I can to help people because America has the moral high ground. Yeah. Right? America and the West in general have the moral high ground. We're not throwing people off buildings because they're gay. We're not fucking telling women they can't drive. We're not telling women they have to walk 15 paces behind us. And we're not making up all this crazy bullshit to suppress minorities. We don't have, like the Chinese have these ethnic minorities in prison camps and shit like that. We own the goddamn moral high ground. And it's not offensive to say that. No. It's not American exceptionalism. We just got it right. Like you have to yeah. be able to admit not just when you're wrong, which is really important. You have to admit when you got it right as well and have the fucking balls to take that rightness other, other, other places, particularly places whose economies depend on America purchasing. Like if, you, if, you're, Chi if you're a Chinese industry, right? right? If you're a company in China that has immense power at this point, right? They're not a true communist nation anymore. They're a fucking hybrid capitalist communist nation. Exactly. They, these big businesses over there have immense power within the government. If American people stop buying their shit because they're fucking imprisoning the uh, Uyghurs and all these other people and fucking with Hong Kong all the time, then they change their fucking ways. You vote with your dollar that way. And we're not allowing that. We well, you know China's, China's military wouldn't keep growing if we'd stop buying their shit. No. No, they wouldn't. Um, so, you know, so my thing, my question to you is, okay, so we're, we're starting the American Party podcast. We talked about it a little bit. So at, at what point do we decide we're going to go ahead and start the formal American Party? You know, the, the, the I mean, I think party. it started but when, 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 when do, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and John Adams sat in that room. Yeah. And, Jeff, and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, Benjamin Franklin's uh, apartment or whatever you want to call it in Philadelphia after Jefferson had written the Declaration of Independence. And Adams, this is, if you haven't read this story or seen this story, you should definitely go read it. Because the dialogue that happens, not just between those three men in the room, but also between John Adams and his wife, who was his closest confidant, right? This is the fucking- It's in eight, a book? Uh, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. the book? Uh, I don't remember the name, but you can- Let's find it and we're uh, gonna read I'll, it. I'll find we're gonna it, read yeah. it on the podcast. I'll find it, yeah. Um, uh, John Adams, this is the late, 18th century obviously when the right, right before the revolutionary war and this this man who is one of the more accomplished attorneys in all of america his wife who has no formal education is his closest confidant because she was a brilliant woman and it's one of the like very original american feminist stories when feminism was still a thing before it became this nonsense that it is a day so if you re if you listen like in your head to the dialogue that's going on between these men 
Thomas Jefferson wrote something very specific. Franklin and Adams, who were, who were both brilliant men in their own right, came in and kind of chopped up the declaration like, hey, this sounds too, like, too much like it's in the church, so we want this to be accepted for everybody and all the stuff. Remember, John Adams is the guy who in the Treaty of Tripoli said, hey, we're not like a Christian nation. We're a nation for all people. Yeah. Like, yeah, we have these <clears throat> values for sure, and we have a lot of Christians here, but we're not the kind of people to divide. We want everybody. Bring us your tired, your poor. That's what the fuck we said. Yeah. Not get the fuck out. We never said that before. So oh. if you listen to the way these guys came to the realization of that, they invented the American Party without really realizing what they were doing. And then all these Whigs and then uh, Democratic Republican and the Republican and Democrats and all this stuff started to show up later. All these divisions started to show up after the fact. This is why everybody talks about 9-12 all the time. You talk about it. Matt Best talks about it all the time. A lot of people in the military community especially talk about how do we get to 9-12 without 9-11? How do we get to the good spot without the bad spot? This is how we do it, through conversation and realizing exactly what America is. It's a social experiment, and it doesn't work unless everybody's on board. It only works if everybody agrees to the premise, and the premise is I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a fuck where you came from. I don't care what you do exactly. And I really don't care what you believe. As long as you believe that individual liberty and all of us working together, yeah. pulling on the same side of the rope yeah. is the most important thing that exists. And that is the most important thing that exists. There's no, a fucking house divided against itself cannot stand. That's from the Bible 2,500 years ago. I think, I'm not a religious dude, but I know fucking wisdom when I see it. I think, um, I think we always have, we have one or two choices with this. Is do we want, do we want conversation? Or do we want conflict? Well, that's Jordan Peterson. We can fight with our words or we yeah. can fight with our fists. Absolutely. And believe me, you do not want to fight with your fists. People who have made a profession out of fighting with your fists, it gets old real goddamn fast. It gets old seeing your friends get fucked up for reasons beyond your understanding. And it gets super old. It gets old, I'm sure, just the weight of care. Like, I, I think about it all the time. Anytime I even see in movies and shit, when I'm watching a movie or a TV show and there's some kind of conflict going on, I could feel it still to this day, and it's been ten years since I've been exposed to any of yeah. that shit. It never goes away. You don't. You don't want that. No, like it. No, like it's it, it's it's taxing. Yeah. Um. Cool, man. Well, I think it's another good show. Yeah, it is. It is. Next week, we we'll get to uh, launch this this week. Well, what is what's today? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, we'll get this out Friday. We'll get the last one out Friday, and then we'll get the next one out the next Friday. Yeah, yeah that's good, man. Yeah. That's good. It's gonna be good. And then we're gonna run for president, twenty twenty four president vice president yeah and hopefully people understand what this is it's not we're not it's super easy to just sit on the sidelines and throw stones at both sides it's easy yeah. to be like i don't i don't really believe any of the democratic or republican shit what are you doing about it exactly yeah. at least the libertarians and the green party and all these other guys as in my opinion as as sophomoric as some of their ideas Weak. are as weak as they are at least they're trying to do something what are you guys out there doing because i yeah. hear people talking bitching? about it all the time just bitching don't just bitch like go have conversations with just people if somebody disagrees with you somewhere don't just like block them and run walk away like try to have a conversation and, and you, how do you you have to be the bigger person yeah. if you're if you're the person that's trying to convince somebody that they're wrong you have to go out of your way to do that they're not going to come meet you halfway you have to go 75 80 maybe 90 percent to their side and sh like hey break it down really slowly like, here's what the fuck you're saying. Here's why it doesn't work. And it's not an offense to you. There's, no wrong, there's nothing wrong with being wrong, by the way. No. Like, that's, it doesn't, it's not a reflection of your character to be incorrect about something because everybody is wrong until they're right. But I think we have to stop proving that each other's wrong. Yeah. And we have to start showing and getting supporting facts that we're right. What's well, not a zero-sum game? Like, you being right doesn't make me wrong. No. You being right makes all of us right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like if, let, it's let, kind of like in a relationship. For sure. It's like a relationship or like, imagine a tribe. We're all searching for water. You have a theory of where water is. I have a theory for where water is. I find water. Are you going to like yeah, your pretend theory. the water doesn't exist and let the whole tribe die? Like that's exactly. fucking stupid. So stupid. Why would you let that happen? It doesn't make any sense, but that's what we do every day politically. We day. sabotage each other. People wish death or failure on the president of the United States regardless of what party they are. Like if you, if you were a Republican back in the day 
and you actively wished for Obama to fail, then you are a fucking piece of shit. Yes, 100%. This country doesn't, you, you don't deserve to be in this country, yep. in my opinion. Yeah. Because that's not what the fuck this country is. No. If you, we fight on the same side. And if you're not about that, then you can get the fuck out. I don't care what your political party is. I'm not going to be one of these people like if Obama wins, I'm going to Canada. No, fuck that. That's stupid. Yeah. Well, but, it, it, but the problem is, is how many of them, how, how many? Zero of, of them left. Left. There you go. Yeah. Left. If everybody who said they were going to leave when their fucking political opponent won, had left, this would be a much better country. Absolutely. It would be an absolutely better country, but that's not that's really how it works. So what do you got to do? Absolutely. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave us comments. Um, Giorgio is going to get this up on YouTube. He's been slacking about it, but we're going to get it now. So When, um, when you say Giorgio has been slacking, you mean you haven't gotten the password <laughs> for it. <laughs> okay, Dan. All right, cool. Well, thank you all.